Colin. Yes. What's your topic? This is a serious topic, Greg. Oh, I want to yeah, wanna... go from like. Well, we went from, from Alzheimer's there. We went down, <laughs> no, no, we're going down the fucking <laughs> rabbit hole here. I want to use my brief time on the show this week to talk about what happened to me last week and to encourage people to take good care of themselves in a very specific way. Now, Greg, you know me well enough to know, uh, you know me better than almost anyone, actually, and you know that I have a notoriously terrible stomach and a terrible gut, and I've had it, like, my whole life. Right. It's awful. Just fucking awful. And uh, I've been dealing with this since I was a, a wee lad. And no one's ever really found out what was wrong with me. I used to do, I, you know, I used to go to BU Medical Center and all this sort of, sort of stuff. And they used to like do tests on me. Oh, you have IBS and all this kind of stuff. And I get like bowel syndrome, exactly. Gross. And I get no, no, I don't have Crohn's. Thank God, because Crohn's <laughs> that'd be a, that's really bad. Um, but uh, I get like these recurring pains that just get worse and worse and worse. Hmm. And by the time I got into college, I used I get crippling <clears throat> pains where like I'd be in like the fetal position on the bathroom floor, like Jesus. like in like really bad shape. And my girlfriend at the time in college found me on the floor at that, like, I was like, you gotta, what the fuck's wrong with you? you gotta she did you on drugs or something? Yeah. She probably did. Um, and uh, so, like, this started this whole train of, like, well, what's wrong with me? Nothing. You have IBS or you have, you know, you have uh, colitis or you have, you know, like, whatever. And then last year I got an endoscopy because they diagnosed me, as you remember, on a with blood tests with celiac disease. And I'm like, oh, you have celiac mm. disease. This is the famous diagnosis. Right. Where we're going mm. to E3. Mm -hmm. And you did a bunch of tests. You were waiting for the results. As we're on the plane, you get the notification that you had a message. So we, we literally are starting to taxi. And like, they, it's we're long past the please turn off your cell phones, you know, right, the right. Blah, 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 the doors closed thing. And you leaned over to, and buried your head into my body like this to <laughs> listen to the voicemail. Lady came by and was like, Sir, you cannot be on your phone. You're like, I'm getting test results. I'm getting test results. <laughs> then you tried to call while we were taking oh, off, and they came yes. back and they're like, "Sir, we will have to contact." Oh my like, I'm, God. I'm getting test results. <laughs> oh wow! And so we were in the war room, and you finally got the test yeah. results, and you cried. Yeah, I started crying. Yeah, yeah. for I, for Celia. Yeah, Congress. I was, love beer. Yeah, I love beer, and yes. I, I'm also half Italian, so I grew up in a yeah. New York Italian family eating eating pasta and all right. you know, bread and all. And I was like, this is devastating. I went literally. A year and a half before they were like, you really should get an endoscopy because the blood test is just indicative that you have it, and even though it's right. almost certainly right. Anyway, et cetera and so on, I got the endoscopy. They're like, oh, no, you don't have celiac disease. So I was like, oh, great. Thanks. So not only do I not know what the fuck's wrong with me again, but I wasn't eating gluten, and uh, and they're like, oh, you have a bunch of ulcers. I'm like, okay, cool. So then I, well, I was back on Long Island at home right before Comic-Con in New York, and I got the worst stomach pain of my entire life. And I'm going to be very vivid with everyone out there because I want you to really understand what was going on. I want you to be able to take care of yourself. I was like shitting blood and like it was like really bad. I was like, oh my God, like I have cancer. Yeah. You know? Or like something's like really fucking Had wrong. Had you ever pooped blood before? Yeah, but not like this. <laughs> not like this. And this the, is like that the Freddy Krueger scene when the bed opens up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Johnny Depp ends up. <laughs> <laughs> he was so cute. Uh, oh well. So I got kill the pretty one. <laughs> so the, 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 the blood was and the pain was like fucking horrifying. Like, horrifying, horrifying pain. As you know, like, it caused me to come to Comic-Con late. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, I was just, like, bedridden at home for, like, three days. It was, like, really weird. At really my, like, my, my old bedroom. Yeah, you were home, at least. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly. And, my, and I was, like, sending pictures of my poop to my dad and stuff like that. I was like, really? <laughs> I was, like is this all right? Classic Colin. Um, but anyway, I, I, like, I, I started to feel better and blah, blah, blah. But then I got, you know, a colonoscopy. Um, and this is a weird thing for a young man to get. And, and... The reason I want to tell everyone this, and it'll be a very brief kind of topic, is the the, the feedback I got from a lot of the doctors and nurses, all very nice people. They're really, really nice people, very, you know, professional. But all, every one of them was like, you're really young. You know? Like, you're really young for this. Why are you so... Why Like, what's wrong? Like, you're like oh, you're so young, and you should... Wait, they were telling you, like, yeah. what's wrong when you're like, I'm like, there because I'm shitting Yeah, but they're blood. like, well, uh, so, like, what happened? Oh, you're and, so young. Yeah, you exactly. Like, that kind of thing. And, and, and what I wanted... So, I wanted to encourage everyone is, like... That kind of bothered me because I was like, something's wrong with me. And, they, and they're obviously like looking into it and, and, and I'm getting my test results and stuff. And they think, you know, hopefully everything's okay. But I want to encourage everyone to like really ignore that shit. Mm. No pun intended. If, uh, so don't, don't ignore, no, the don't shit. ignore the don't shit, ignore yeah. the but shit. ignore that shit. Mm. If, so, if something's wrong with you, like really follow up on it because like it was very, it felt discouraging in a way. 
You know, to be but you like, were already there, right? I was. Well, even when I was like, seeing the, the, the general practitioner and their stuff, and they're like, well, we don't think anything's wrong with you because you're, you're young. You know? like but, embarrassing, but, too. But, but, but you know, do the, stool, do the stool samples and do all those kinds of things, and then we'll schedule a colonoscopy, right? So I just wanted to encourage everyone, like, really follow. Because, like, getting endoscopies and colonoscopies is, like, very invasive. And, like, and it hurt. Like, it, it's it's painful. I, like, woke up during the colonoscopy. Oh, See, you know, you God. say this. Are you sure you did? Yeah, so you I, I'm pretty la- positive. I mean, I was pretty fucked up, but, See, like. And that, stick with me. I remember watching a video from the last time you had a surgery where you're all fucked up. Oh, yeah. Talking to Cheryl, yelling stuff. Like, yeah. are you sure you didn't just hallucinate this one? Well, I'm going to find oh, out when they go. Do we, do we have this video? Cheryl yeah, I'm sure Cheryl right? has it, yeah. He sent it, I used to a long time let's, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try to find that. Okay. Yeah, I was like totally, I, when I got my endoscopy, I was fucking wrecked. Like for like a day. I was like totally messed up. If we this time it, I was less wrecked. it right now. And if we don't, we didn't insert it right now. Wait, when when was that? Uh, Like a year ago. Can you can you be more specific? No, like literally almost a year ago. Like the new searching on Apple phones for the photos, very helpful. Like I'm able to just track things down. Is it new? To me it is. So it's new yeah, to me. You know, it was like, <laughs> I was four. <laughs> Shut up. <Tim. laughs> but but that's it. It's just a very brief and simple thing to like really listen to your body and take care of yourselves. Uh, because I probably should have done this stuff a lot sooner. And conventional wisdom says that you don't get colonoscopies until you're 50 or so. So like, you know, and they found a polyp and they cut it out and hopefully everything's good and they took some samples and stuff like that. But, you know, I just want to encourage people. Someone someone wrote on my Facebook something really profound because I took a picture of myself in a gown. My a gown, I just like posted it as a joke and be like, you know, I got a colonoscopy. You should do it too if you are having stomach pains. Like, don't, you know, take care of that. And someone was like, even if you can get one person to listen to you, you did a good thing. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there, that energy out there, that, you know, what resonated most with me with that visit was like, wow, you're so young and this is so unusual. Well, maybe it isn't. And maybe you mm-hmm. should, maybe you should do these kinds of things if you really feel like you need to even if like everyone's conventional wisdom says that there's nothing wrong with you you know because yeah. there's obviously something wrong with me uh the other thing and i just to, for a little more you know for, to, to to lighten the mood a little bit is uh the process of getting the colonoscopy beforehand oh, is the, the drinking horrific. of the the yeah the cocktail the call fluid it. like concoction are you are you aware of this i'm not i wouldn't have been aware like, of this if colin's gonna send me a photo well, I'm is in, on like vacation a, in Missouri. I have all these different X lax lax Like two, what? How many gallons? It's like, well. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. They this. It's like so excessive. I was like telling the nurse, I'm like, this is so unnecessary. Like, they're like, go to the store, buy um, magnesium nitrate, which is in itself just a complete <clears throat> laxative. They're like, go buy Ducalax, which is the pill, their pills, and go buy Miralax. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, go buy two things of Gatorade, 32 ounce Gatorade. Oh, this is yeah. the doctor telling you to yeah. drink Gatorade, by the way. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a health nut. And Gatorade is the shittiest thing you can drink. I'm done. I'm from Berkeley. I'm done. <laughs> no, they, I think they, I'm just saying, doctor, is go drink Gatorade. Well, yeah, they, I think it's got doctor. electrolytes. Yeah, I think, I think that's <laughs> yeah. why they want it's it. It's got electrolytes. It'll, it's electrolytes. Well, I think they want that because it, it's like, it's got to hydrate you because you can't yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I didn't eat. What would you have them drink, you health Coconut nut? Coconut water, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Does that have electrolytes? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Sorry, I just get angry. Does it have gum? Gum? Does it have chewies and gummies? No. <laughs> Does it have, did Michael Not Jordan yet. drink it? Anyways. <laughs> the swamp. So, you so know, it's named Gatorade because it helped the Florida Gator. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, commercials for Gatorade. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to show you guys how excessive this was. At four, all right, so my, my thing was at 9 o'clock in the morning the next day. I hadn't sure. eaten since 8 o'clock the day before. You can't eat. In the morning or night? At night. Okay. I didn't end up eating for 45 hours. So, Jesus. Wait, so, what? so from eight, 8 p.m. on Wednesday, I didn't eat until like five o'clock. Well, they have to have Friday. it like completely. I mean, you gotta be yeah, yeah you gotta be like empty, gotta be clean. clean. And so, and also, I passed out when I got home. So, like, there was another eight hours time. Uh, um, so they were like at four o'clock, take two Docalax pills. You're only supposed to take one, and that will clear you out. So they're like, take two of them, and then at five o'clock, take half the Miralax, which is eight servings of it. So you can, you can, there's like 16 in the bottle that will clear you out 16 times. Take eight of them, put them in the Gatorade and drink it within one hour. And 30 minutes after that, it was fucking game over for me. But that was only, <laughs> but that was only half of it. Because then they were like at three in the morning, get up, drink the other half, <sighs> the other eight, and then drink the entire bottle of magnesium nitrate. <laughs> when I tell you I shit 30 times in 12 hours it's no joke and when i tell you 25 of them was nothing but gatorade that 
That also is not a joke. There's your fucking and, coconut water. Yeah. <laughs> and I told it's him, a I'm like, color. I, I went in, and then the nurse was very friendly, very friendly with my girlfriend. And I'm like, it's a little excessive. Is this is it? really necessary? Like, I've been on the goddamn toilet bowl all day and all night. I was done after the first Miralax <laughs> dosage. <laughs> Why do I have to keep doing this over and over again? So that was much worse than the fire in the sky moment I experienced when I woke up so during that. So tell me what that actually is. Like, All right, so my only think? memory of it. So here's the thing I didn't know, and I don't know if you guys know this. I didn't know this. And 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 our friend Dan, who we work with, a reviews editor, his Stay his his uh, wife's a doctor, an anesthesiologist, and he was like, no, this is true. One of the one of the drugs they give you, they give you drugs to ease the pain, to knock you out, and to give you amnesia. Did you did you know that? No. So that if something happens, you don't remember. And so, like, it, like that's why you're so fuzzy. Why is my bra on backwards? I so, don't know. So, like, Sorry, I, I have a memory. Dirty. Like, they tell you to that's get on good, your side. I assumed that I was going to be on my stomach. Yeah. But it's, you get on your side. Yeah. And you're facing away from them. And you're facing, like, a monitor. And I pass out. I remember the last thing I remember the doctor saying to me. The first, when I got the endoscopy, the, doc, the last thing the doctor said to me before I fell asleep was, like, the oxygen's going in my, in my, my nose. And they, they, they start the drugs. And you're, like, fucking out, like, really quick. And I'm yeah. like, I hope you don't find anything. He's like, don't count on it. That was what I, I remember him saying. The second time was that I had a female doctor this time, and I was, and she said something to me. I'm like, "Yes, ma'am," and the doctor's like, "Don't call her ma'am, call her Doctor Ross." And then I was out like that. <laughs> oh. I was like, "All right." <laughs> uh, but then I wait. I remember waking up and freaking the fuck out, and like someone holding me down. No, this didn't and something happen. And, and something I in my a- and something in my ass. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> like, well, like, I, I mean, felt something. I felt something. I felt something in. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, something in my ass and in me. And like, they held. Like, someone like got on top of me, like to make sure I didn't move. <laughs> I and they know. probably like eat, like up the dosage. Like, really quickly. Like, I get knocked the, knocked back out. I know people who've woken up mid like wisdom teeth surgery because it's twilight. It's a twilight sleep. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and they're like, ah, they're in, you know. Yeah, so like, and then I was, <laughs> and I was down. just back out, and the last thing, I, and I don't remember anything else until like I was in a wheelchair. That's four four. She's on top of you, going, "I'm Doctor Ross." <laughs> <laughs> Call me, ma'am, one more time. <laughs> but she was, she was, super, she was super friendly, and they were very professional. So uh, wait, you come out of it, and you're talking, they're getting the, the check down or whatever at the end. You don't, this doesn't come up. No, because the doctor didn't even come out to see me. A nurse came and said, "Like, here's your results. The doctor will call you next week." The, the first time when I had the endoscopy, the doctor came out to talk to me, and then midway through, he was like, you have no idea what I'm saying, yeah. so I'll just talk to you next week. Because I was like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. that was when I was, when I got my endoscopy, the famous, the story Cheryl always tells is that, you know, they have the little heart monitor on your finger, and I kept taking it off to flatline, because I, I thought it was funny. And, she's, and she told me this time, I was like, going, like, I was like in slow motion, going like... <laughs> and she like, like, would hit, like hit my hand away. Did you guys see the video... Probably not. But last week, um, somebody did some surgery, some girl, and her some, friend. Some girl some, did a surgery. Some girl did a surgery. I don't know the details on it. So the Doesn't kids matter. On YouTube these days. Her friend taped it, and it was so funny because she, the girl's like super upset. And she's like, What's wrong? Are you okay? She's like, I'm not Nicki Minaj. I oh, yeah. Cheryl told me to wake up and be Nicki this. Minaj. And it's so funny. Right. That's you awesome. Drugs. Watch that. Has yeah, Nicki God Minaj reached out yet? Not that I know of. Which is upsetting because yeah. she should. She really should. She was just so. She's like, "Do you think Nicki Minaj is pretty?" She's like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm not that pretty." <laughs> oh my god, it's a brain. It yeah. It's an That's interesting thing. thing. Mm-hmm. The drugs are insane, though. So, so oh just so what? The drugs are insane. After all of that. So after all that, so uh, I'm getting my results back, but I just, you know, the, the doctors. The one thing I because I have Kaiser, and the the they're really good. Like I like them a lot, and like they've always been really nice. And thrive. They, at, thrive exactly. <laughs> That's what they're saying. They've always been very professional, very nice, um, very helpful, whatever. But it was just that one thing where I was like, you know, I'm already here and I'm, I'm in the process. But what if they're saying this, like, or what if people are getting this message that it's just they're a little young, you know, it, oh. it's unusual. To me, it just it stuck out as like, I want to encourage people to really kind of take care of this earlier because so many people have, like me, I'm a ball of stress. Like I was saying earlier, I'm just fucking stressed out all the time for no reason. And uh, it really does take a toll on you. Right. And it, I think that's why my stomach's so fucked up. When I played hockey, I played hockey for all those years. I would throw up before games all the time. Like, I was just, like, such a, like, a mm, mess. Nervous. You know, like, and you feel in your gut. That's where a lot of your nerves are. Like, you, you know, so, like, it's 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 just something I wanted to encourage people to, you know, look into. Well, you're having stomach problems wherever, like, and you're young and you want to 
you know, keep going. In general, look at any problem you have yeah. that pops up. Well, right. it, but that's such an old person problem, right? Like, like. Well, sure, but I mean, like, like, get your colonoscopy when you're 50 every five years right. or whatever, but it's like, I'm 30. Right. And I've had these problems my whole life. So it's just, it's just one of those I caught things. cancer at a weird time. You know what I mean? Usually ki- it's either you're like leukemia and you're a kid right. or you're like getting older and it's this something else, right? And I caught it right at around 28, right? 27, somewhere in there. And it was, was one of those things of like, yeah, wait, it's been a while, which is weird. Yeah. But yeah, you know, like I remember when my lymph nodes sw- 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 swelled up the first Swelled. time right and you and i was like oh well that happens all the time and then when it didn't go away i was like i should keep an eye on that and i forget about i remember it. that and then it would pop up and then when this it was your friend up, it was your friend that told you that you should go to the doctor wasn't it like your doctor friend. no it was by that point i knew well this is when i went back to chicago for poe's wedding and i me and christine it was christine's first time in chicago and i was watch walking her down at a fancy purse shop that i always get wrong so i won't say which one because i'll screw it up because <laughs> i usually say the wrong one and she's like that's a cheap purse shop you're making me sound weird i'm like all right uh we were walking around Around, Marshalls. And we were in there, and she was like, I'm going to go look at that person. I'm like, cool, I'm going to sit down real quick. She's like, okay. You know, she went away, and I sat down and I Googled heart attack symptoms because uh, the walls were yeah, pulsating yeah, 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 in. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, something's very wrong. Right. And, and, and the, the internet was like, that's not a heart attack. And I was like, well, I'm not going to call an ambulance to downtown Chicago then. But didn't, your, didn't your friend feel your neck? Well, that what happened, that was like, this is like, I had the, sw- the swollen lift nodes, and then I had a lump over my collarbone. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's that, that was not, really weird. Yeah, Obviously, I knew that's... something was wrong, and so like that, the walls pulsating was like, all right, I need to actually act on this. And so at the wedding, I talked to my doctor friend Noonan, Doctor Noonan, about it, and he was like, oh, he's drunk too, and he's like, I'll check you, and he he's doing the note, and he's doing the whole thing. Mm, yeah, that's out of, out of the ordinary. He did this, blah blah. And then one of Poe's friends, like. A girlfriend who I knew, knew as well, obviously, just walked by and she's like, "Oh, if your lymph nodes are swollen up, it's probably just Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's the one you want." And walked away. That's the one you. And then want. I went. That's in, what you had. Yeah, that's what it was when I went. Oh, in interesting. There. But yeah, but I went into that doctor's appointment thinking, not trying not to overthink it, right? Because you know, I think throughout my life, when stupid things happen, you're always like, "Well, I'm, this is it. Yeah, this is something it. bad. This is as bad." And then you get there, and yeah. the doctor's like, "No, that's totally normal. You've wasted time. You're like, I'm out 150 bucks." Damn it. Right, right. And so when I went in to see that doctor, I remember I went in for something totally, I guess I actually don't remember. I went in for something mundane and that. And I was leading with the mundane thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, and these are swollen up. These are he's like, okay. And he's like, the other thing is no big deal. And then he when it felt my neck. He's like, hmm. And then he felt my thing. He went, hmm. And he went over and got a ruler and came back. Then he jotted something down, left the room, came back in. He's like, oh, you, this is troublesome. And, you know, but when I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, his nurse came back in and handed me a post it note like this. And said, "You have a you have it was, you have a cat scan or a pet scan. You have a pet scan today at wow. four. And I was like, oh, "We're moving that quick. That's two hours from now. Like I have to call work. They're like just go. You do not have to call work. You need yeah, to yeah, go." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh, uh oh." <laughs> and then everything was so spedited from there. And like yeah, when man. I when I got the scan, I guess it was a cat scan. I got the the scan or whatever. And uh, I'm in the tube, and they bring me in, and they only you know brought me down uh, into about here or whatever. And then I was in there for a while, and they pulled me back out, and they came over to the intercom, and he's like, "Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna do phase two pretty soon here. Phase two pretty soon." I'm like, "Okay." And then I was like, "I don't." They never said there was a phase two of this. And I laid there for like another ten minutes, and they came back on, and he's like, "Sorry, uh, we're just trying to get uh, approval from the doctor on call, but he's not answering his phone, and your doctor's not answering his phone either. So just hold it tight, no big deal." And they came back like another ten minutes later, I'm like, "All right, well, the stuff we gave you, the you know the radioactive stuff to make it you visible." That's about to wear off. We wouldn't want to give you another dose. So we're just going to take you off. I'm like, okay. And I left and I called my friend. I'm like, this just happened. I'm like, I call him like, and I honestly, because I get, it must've been a CAT scan because I get, PET scans are a huge deal. Anyways, when I got the scan, I CAT scan, called the guy and I'm like, on the way, I'm like, hey, like when you get a CAT scan, can they see preview images back there? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. And sure enough, right. when you read my charts, it was like the scan showed that I had growth clearly so below they were like where it was. Ah. And they were like, we want to go lower and see how bad it was, yeah, but they couldn't yeah, do yeah. it in time. And then everything turned out to be what it was. Yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember that, man. I remember mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. a very emotional, a very emotional thing. Mm-hmm. It became, not for you, you know, I don't want to say it was it was easy, obviously it was a very hard thing, but it became when you knew that you were okay, even though you still had it and you were in the very beginning or whatever, yeah. you were like, I'm going to be fine. You were much stronger than everyone else was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think I cried. <laughs> well, mine were, mine were all, my stuff was all staggered, right? Like, I had time that I knew something was wrong, and I knew it wasn't good, and I knew this was happening. Like, I had time to come to terms with everything. Whereas everybody else, it was a light switch, right? Where I, like, that night, I had to sit out there at the kitchen table and call everybody. Mm. Call mom, call dad, call Poe, call, you know I mean? Call all down this list of friends who I, and like, who immediately know something's wrong because I hate talking on the phone. Yeah, so to get yeah, a phone yeah. call from me, everybody's like, are you, like, I think every, everybody's first guess was like, 
you're marrying Christine? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Dial it to something else. Why else would I call? Like, you have a disease? I'm like, yes, cancer. Oh, my God. And I was like, that with awkward silence for most of the time. The, 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 one of the, uh, it's it's funny now in retrospect, but the one of the funny things I was thinking about about that time was uh, the conversation with Colin when we were talking about, um, what we weren't talking about, we were talking about when I went, we went to the Jets game, but you couldn't go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah it's, like, it's the was, opening for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, I was like, you missed a hell of a game. And you're like, well. <laughs> no, no, it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went. Uh, God, what? Yeah, that was a great opening for that episode. But yeah, yeah, I don't all screw it up too. But it was something along the lines of like, yeah. Well, yeah, that's when you got sick with cancer and you had to miss that Jets game. And it was a great game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to, I wanted to just relay that, that. That because it's it's funny you can laugh at me and laugh at like my misfortune of maybe having a fire in the sky alien type moment. And, I want and, you and to then, ask. The I'm gonna I'm gonna totally I'm gonna believe, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna ask her. And I, I bet she'll you. say no. Reg- I yeah. hope so. <laughs> Across the table, not even the problem is maybe it did really happen. They're denying that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Did what you you're talking ju- about. did someone jump on me and I felt like I had something <laughs> in my ass? Uh, nah. No, Mr. Moriarty. And I'm Doctor. Ross. Yeah, like that's what I remember. Is just someone like not like jumping over me, like hovering over me, but like someone just like. Like and like, then some you probably movement. started like were you moving screaming around. I think so. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, ah. that's what I remember. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, the, the, I just wanted to throw that out there because so, I like the the story of the lead up to the colonoscopy because it was just so fucking unnecessary. Yeah. That's uh, nice. But also, uh, yeah, just to encourage people to kind of take care of themselves, listen to their bodies, listen and, to uh, your heart. <laughs> even if things are unusual, you might seem a little young, or a little, maybe a little weird illness kind of thing. You know, it was, it was very helpful for me to kind of get the endoscopy, get the colonoscopy, and, and kind of take those things off. Of course, I still have no idea what the hell is wrong with me. Uh, but, but you will now, hopefully. With yeah, the hopefully, tests. hopefully I will. But yeah, just just kind of use that as an instructive kind of thing to, you know, you know, don't ignore these things. I ignored my shit for a long time. Again, no pun intended. If it comes back with, they still don't know what's wrong with you, Lyme disease. Lyme disease? Nobody ever knows. It's kind of true, actually. Yeah. If I didn't catch it when I was back home on Long Island, which is like you probably did. It, then and you don't know, and it's, it's like it can sit dormant for like years can it? it's, yeah, it's kind of weird that way yeah in Connecticut and Connecticut like, no, everybody's like I don't know what to do Borrelia really bacteria or whatever the hell it is bad stuff would you write a story about that I did <laughs> I would tell you that story Missouri yeah uh, exactly maybe, lots maybe. of ticks in Missouri it was this long thing of like the CDC in Missouri technically didn't recognize Lyme disease because like uh it, there's a special strand of um, this is I'm stretching here for things I did a long time ago a special strand of bacteria in it or whatever and they had never found that specific one so they couldn't say they had it but they had found like 17 different variants that were just like slightly off of it so clearly it was there but they couldn't scientifically do it so i did this article about all these people who were coping with it and dealing with it in missouri and yada yada yada. i work on this thing for like six months the longest piece i ever did at the trib and uh i'm driving home from one of my appointments with it or whatever and i sit down at my desk to write up some notes or whatever and i shit you not i feel something on my arm and i look over and there's a tick crawling on my arm like what the yeah. They knew I was about to blow them up. Yeah. <laughs> they sent their, their agents out to get Sending me. Out. Motherfucking ticks. Don't trust them for a second. Not ever.